Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, I'm popping in every so often. <laughs> it's uh, me and Nigel, and uh, apparently we're here with Cheryl, Liz, and the lovely Miss Sheila. I wanted to say hello to everybody who's here at the moment. Um, and uh, Cheryl says that she is wearing her new Anya and Mermaid uh, dreams. It's actually Mermaid Kisses are, but you know what? It's Mermaid something or other. So you got it. You got it mostly right. So we'll give you like a, a B plus for, for name memorization. So that's still a passing grade. <laughs> that's like a silver star on the chart. That's great. Um, I'd love to get it in Beach House, but funds aren't there right now. That's okay. You know what? Like we're going to keep making this stuff and, you know, if if it happens it happens and if it doesn't we still like hanging out with you either way you know what i mean like that there there is there is no requirement it's not like a, a two-wig limit <laughs> for a Gilio, you know <laughs> hi kathleen oh kathleen sent me pictures uh, earlier today by the way um of herself wearing um the uh, mirabella in the strawberry shake without any makeup she just had some lip gloss on oh my gosh she looks so good <laughs> It's like the color just works so perfectly with her skin tone. It was like one of those moments where I was like, oh, it was so good. It, it was like literally like almost tear inducing because I enjoy, like it's like a joyful thing. I really, really, really like super enjoy not only pairing people with wigs, you know, that maybe they might not have considered, but in the case of Miss Kathleen, because she's owned several like pink wigs in the past. Um, it's just really gratifying to see something that was in my head on somebody's head. You know what I mean? Like they're wearing it and then they love it. It's just such an interesting, wonderful process. It's very gratifying to be that creative and then see somebody else that's really creative, really get joy out of it. It's just, it's lovely. Um, Susan so says hi. Hi, Susan. Um, and Cheryl adds... Oh, she got a Jacinda and Ravens and Roses. Let me know how it goes. We're actually um, going to be showcasing three different Jacindas tonight. And I intentionally picked slightly lightish colors. Um, so if you wondered why they're all kind of, you know, uh, you know, more of like the colorful colors as opposed to like the more natural subdued color. Part of the reason why is because I really wanted to show the vulnerability of the Jacinda style that we just launched and why we're only charging 25 bucks for it. Because if you still think it looks good, knowing all that information about her, then it's going to be awesome. You, you will probably really enjoy the wig. You will probably love wearing it. But I want to make sure I don't oversell these because she's very pretty. But as I've mentioned to my Patreon audience in the past and I've mentioned in previous live streams, um, Jacinda was supposed to be kind of like a synthesis of three different styles conceptually. She's a little bit like Ambro, she's a little bit like Felix, and she's a little bit like Bardo. She's got like basically the length and overall concept of Ambrose, but the hair density of, and curl pattern of Bardo. And she's got the cap of Felix and the kind of the, the bang of Felix a little bit. And, uh, it was a great idea. It looked really great in prototype stage, but the problem was once we got it and I was actually able to see multiple um, uh, examples of the wig, we literally inspected every single one of these because I noticed when I did my spot checks that some of them looked a little sparse in the back. And my staff and I painstakingly went through every single one of these by hand to see, you know, what percentage of these were, were kind of sparse looking. And we found that, you know, most of them were okay, but enough of them, about 40% of them were a little bit eh. And so it was usually in the lighter colors, hence why I'm showing those off to you today. And um, because of that, I thought someone's going to really love this. Someone will probably really love working with this, playing with it. Uh, if you style it, it probably won't be a problem at all. But it's just, you know, when you get it home right off the bat, after you pull it out of the, in, case, in this case, soft packaging, you know, how quickly you're able to make that wig wearable really matters. And if it's something that um, takes a lot of styling to get it to look like, you know, a good standalone wig, I don't think it's appropriate to charge full price for it. <laughs> so I think that it's a great wig. I think that someone is going to really love the heck out of it. And people who bought our irregular Bardot, which had a similar issue, they also 
really loved it. We got excellent feedback from people. So I think even the wigs that don't necessarily hit the mark 100% of the ones we're producing, as long as we are upfront about the limitations and as long as we adjust the price accordingly, most people have been pretty cool with it so far. And that's that's been very refreshing. So um, today, oh, hi, Andrea. Hey, Nigel, honey, if you're gonna share a quote, make sure you get on the screen and that you are joining. Well, I look like such a mess. I don't wanna be seen. Whatever, you are delightful, delicious, and de lovely. Even well, though Andrea says, hi, everyone, happy Friday. And furthermore, where'd it go? Shelly says, hello. And she bought the book you recommended a couple of weeks ago, Making Faces. Ha, ah, yes, it is a classic. It is a classic. Um, I, I know some of the looks in there are slightly dated um, because, you know, uh, he wrote that book, um, uh, Kevin O'Quan. He wrote that back in like the late 90s. But it's pretty much like a beautiful Bible. Like big time influencers like Wayne Goss swear by this book. It's literally one that's on like, if you ask for the top 10 list from most beauty influencers that are really big on any platform, it's usually on that list somewhere because it's just kind of iconic. So if you didn't have any really good makeup books uh, about theory from, from you know, the get-go, this is a great one to start with. And Bobby Boss's book, the one that I've got back here too, um, let me grab it. It's huge. It's like a, it's like a makeup Bible. Um, her makeup manual is often used in makeup schools. It's super thorough. She covers so much. So this is another one I highly recommend. I've learned so much so quickly <laughs> about makeup theory just from these two books. Um, and I'm still learning. Um, and obviously I haven't gone all the way through this, but I love this Bobby um, Brown book. I, I might have said Bobby Boss earlier. My apologies. I'm used to living in wigs, you know. Um, but this one is particularly nice as well because she not only... Uh, goes through all the basics and chemicals and which chemicals mix with which chemicals and which ones will break all your makeup up. But she also goes through step-by-step -step application processes really painstakingly. And she's just got a knack for being really detail-oriented with that stuff. So this one's also highly recommended. Let me put that back. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm wearing compression pants and a Dolly Parton t-shirt today. <laughs> I love my dolly shirt, but I love compression pants because I feel so skinny. <laughs> it's like all that skin just being sucked right in. I feel very snatched right now. <laughs> Shauna made it. It's nice to have you with us. And uh, Cheryl says, what about Face Forward from Kevin from 2001? All his books are good. And in fact, I think I have that one too. I really do. I think it's probably here someplace. I, I don't want to have to keep getting up, but I, I, I do. It's right here. Well, hey. Yeah. Great minds, eh? <laughs> but yeah, uh, and this, this is the guy. Oh, but yeah, it's just all his books are so, so incredibly good. And Kathleen <laughs> says you look amazing. Thank you, Kathleen. I, I always feel like. I've got a little bit of extra mojo whenever I'm wearing my dolly shirt. It's it's one of my favorites. It's just, I love the saying on it. It's tease it to Jesus and spray like hell. And they got her posed like the Virgin Mary with a can of Aquanet. Mwah. Well, Heather, <laughs> Heather introduced me to that movie several months ago. I, I, I think it was around Christmas time, actually, we, we, we watched that. Wait, and... Uh, the, the we, Steel Magnolias? Steel Magnolias, yeah. And we uh, we, uh, we got it from... Ah! Wendy from Australia! Hey. So glad you guys could join us. Yes, thank you. And hi, Oh, Karen. and hey. Karen is well. Karen is here. Hello, Karen. And, and she's she's toasting us, so I toast her back. And uh, anyway, watching the Steel Magnolias and, and all that... <sighs> There was a typo on the screen um, when we rented it from <laughs> from Amazon Prime. They did not put a space where they should have. And, well, this isn't Sister Weeks 2, so I'm not going to say it out loud in case we get demonetized. But, um, I yeah. Don't it don't monetize the live streams i might someday but at the moment i'm not and by the way if you guys see ads running on this channel or the other two channels that's totally youtube inserting ads with 
and they're taking the money from it. So um, I might as well monetize at some point. But yeah, uh, it's more that they will actually suppress our view rankings. That's that's really the challenge, not so much the demonetization. Just wanted to be pedantic for a moment. I thought you'd appreciate that, honey. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, they they what happened was they they had an all star cast, but they did not put a space between an and all. And I'll let your imagination fill in the rest. <laughs> Kathleen says, hello there, Kathleen Simmons. Hello. And I, just, I retreat. I was basically just waving at everybody as if I'm dog paddling. I, I don't know why I just did that, but it was funny enough to call attention to it. Um, so today we are going to be doing a fun thing. Um, we're going to be playing around with the Soft Glam Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. As I mentioned in the description for this video, um, this was the winner as of the Midnight at Wednesday deadline for the voting. But after that deadline passed, it fell to third place behind um, the uh, Smashbox Minimalist. And the number one was the Mac Dust Dusty Rose or Dusky Rose times nine, which is actually one of my favorites. Um, so I will find a way to make videos about those two palettes. In fact, I have a lot of material to work with. Let's just say I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes as Nigel can attest to, I'm kind of obsessed. So um, I will have plenty of, of opportunity to talk about those two palettes. I will bring them back out again. So I know that, that uh, you know, if we're looking at that poll right now, those two were ahead of this one, and I want to acknowledge that. Um, but by the time that they had actually pulled ahead, I had already started researching this one and had already done the swatching and all kinds of stuff. And I actually already shot uh, a test video for Patreon. It's just I haven't had time to um, edit it, just like the one from the week before, which I also filmed but have not edited. It. So, um I'm actually uh, in the process of making an update for my patrons on Patreon, so that way they can understand um, what's going on that has been eating up my time, and um, and also to arrange the AMA live stream, um, which they're very much do. Uh, I'm scheduling that, by the way, for June 1st. So if you're a patron on our Patreon, just know I'm going to make an announcement about that probably in the next couple of days, um, and as well as an update video, just so you guys know what's been eating up some of my time here. Um, but today, soft glam is what we're doing. Okay, let's see. Jody's on board, and she's been wanting that Mac palette. So it's a good palette, Jody. It's it's literally one that I've been using for years. It's very very good. And Shelly is thanking you for the book recommendations. She's just written them all down. <laughs> They're excellent. You can't go wrong with any of those three books. They're very good. And Bettina has just joined us. Hi, Bettina. Hi. Oh my gosh, I love the facial expression, by the way, in your uh, profile photo. <laughs> I love it. It makes me want to hang out with you. <laughs> Kathleen says, what lipstick are you using? And does it stay on a long time? I have it right here. It's actually hey. the first time wearing it. So we will see by the end of this video how, how well this wears. Live streams usually go on for about an hour or so, sometimes a little bit longer. So I'll be doing a lot of talking and a lot of beverage sipping with my lips right on the cup. So if it wears off, we will notice. Uh, so it's kind of a, a test in real time. This is a color I'm actually pretty smitten with right now. This is the Lost Cherry from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, so let me show you. That's a loaded name. Well, all of, that is kind of the trend right now. Makeup names are getting real risque. Like, um, for example, NARS is really known for their blushes and their most popular blush color, Nigel. Get, get ready for this. You might spit take, so you might want to swallow first. That is so a loaded thing to say. Oh, my God. Loaded. Oh, God. It's just it's just going to keep going like this, guys. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's literally called orgasm the most the most popular color from nars and their most popular product is a blush called orgasm and jeffree star cosmetics is known for for being even edgier like when the pen when these challenging times first started like as soon as they started like a month later he launched a palette called the cremation palette well <laughs> what can i say jeffree yeah. star He's widely known to be a pillock. He's kind of a troll. He's like a makeup. Allegedly. 
<laughs> you know, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep dropping that in there. Allegedly. I think I think the cat's out of the bag on that one, though. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, but it's very common at this point for makeup companies to just name things, all kinds of like sexual innuendos and tacky things. So yeah, this one's called Lost Cherry and it's a very soft, almost nude, almost, but it's still a pink. It's like a cherry pink. I love this color. I fell in love with it when I first saw it on the website and oh. you things that are called cherry tend to work really well with my skin tone because they're a little bit like of a cooler pink color you know it's like a nice alternative to a coral because corals are pretty but you know um you know my, my skin tone is just a little bit cooler than that so i'd have to be real strategic if i want something that peachy but cherries cherry colors i'm i'm there so we'll see how this goes it's a matte i find that it's very lightweight it feels moisturizing. My, my lips do not feel like they're dry from this particular mat. So that has been really nice. And I've taken multiple sips from this cup. And while I can kind of see the impression, you can see it's not really leaving much in the way of like evidence. <laughs> like there's not a ton of pink all over this cup, which is also kind of promising. If they found, a, if Charlotte Tilbury found a magical way to make a matte lipstick that stays, but doesn't turn my lips into a desert, I will be all about that. <laughs> so I'll let you know by the end of the video. Jody says they have a matching orgasm lip balm. Those colors are great. And I, I highly, the orgy palette. Yeah, absolutely. Like I think that came after cremation and after conspiracy and all that stuff. And I didn't, I didn't buy any of those though. I will admit that when blood money first came out, I was very tempted by that one and blue blood, but I didn't buy either of them. And in hindsight, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad for it, but it's just, um, you know, I already, I kind of have brands that I'm really interested in discovering and kind of like exploring a little bit more. And that's one that just never really appealed to me because the the naming conventions he uses and the packaging and the social media campaigns that he uses seem very um, gimmicky. I also don't like all of the like uh, gimmicky packaging in a lot of cases. Like I hate the fact that I love Pat McGrath, but I hate that she packages all her stuff with sequins in it. Like why? They're, they just go everywhere. <laughs> Your facial expression says everything, honey. As far as I'm concerned, sequins are just glitter writ large, and we know how I feel about glitter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, eh, it's cute. It's like a party. I mean, I might even have one of her. I might have something here so I can kind of show you. Um... I've been waiting to kind of play around with this, but literally I'm intimidated by the packaging of it because look at all these sequins. Like, I'm afraid to open this because I'm afraid of the mess that this is going to make. Okay, well, Heather, when you do, when you do want that open, leave it to me and I'll do it with surgical precision. But it's like, who comes up with this crap? So, I mean, I'm kind of at the, I mean, it's because I'm 40. I'm kind Rip of- Rip Taylor. I'm kind of, Rip Taylor. I'm kind of over gimmicky packaging, you know? And that's kind of why I like omitting some of the gimmicky packaging from the wigs I'm creating. Um, you know, because sometimes it's cute. You know, sometimes it's cute. Like I really enjoy the, um, the beautiful boxes and packaging from um, Kaleidos. That stuff's- beautiful and this mm. box is going to be part of my set forever because it's so darn sturdy so it's like a shipper plus storage and it's it's utilitarian and cool magnetic I, closure maybe, maybe that is the thing that i need i need it to be slightly utilitarian to justify mm. it being there <laughs> i don't i don't know i don't know maybe yes. I, sorry oh. kathleen says hate to tell people oh my skin tone works well with cremation palette <laughs> Yeah. The thing is, I don't know if anyone's skin tone really goes well right off the bat with those tones because it's just grays. It's like, a, it's, it's basically like, um, you know, just, just a whole bunch of grayscale and that can be really interesting looking, but it almost always looks really harsh unless you, you mix other things in with it to kind of make it look, a, I mean, calling it that it to a certain extent makes sense because it will look a little bit gothy extreme 
you know, and, and, and to make it a little bit more approachable, you would almost have to break out another palette and mix other colors in with it. Joanna says, don't need crafting or herpes in your makeup. That's right. That's and right. And Kathleen says, I always joke that glitter is the STD of the craft world. My kids used it a lot when they were little. Yeah. I mean, I wear makeup once in a while that has has glitter in it, but I ha also have glitter glue to make sure that it stays where I put it. And, you know, I'm very, like I use glitter on my nails, but I, I, I tend to like it, for example, in things like my nails where it's shellacked firmly in place and it's not going anywhere. It's not going to leave stuff all over the place. Like I, I promise I'll stop ranting here in a moment, but a good example of this is I love this sultry palette which is another Anastasia Beverly Hills product. And it's actually um, one of those interesting things that I noticed while I was playing around with this palette, which is filthy because I've experimented with it so thoroughly for this particular video live stream. Um, there's a color in here called Sultry that is really, really pretty. It's kind of like a, a pinky chocolate metallic color. That's, it's pretty sweet. Um, and here, I'll just kind of swatch it on my hand. It's almost like a pinky chocolate bronze, like a rosy bronze color. Like it's super pretty. But um, they have an entire sultry palette and the packaging is almost identical to, to this and this color is nowhere in it. <laughs> it's like, they were like, great. We're, it's like, you would think that they would put the color sultry in the sultry palette. I wonder if anybody else has called attention to that because I noticed it right away. But the other thing I noticed right away is every time I handle this palette or anytime I handle the, um, oh, which one is it? I think it's the Carly Bible palette. The glitter on these palettes, it, it isn't nicely shellacked in place. It literally goes all over my hand. And that's really weird with, with some of these palettes, particularly the ones that are kind of matte dominant, because why would you want a palette that's going to put glitter on your hands if you're using mainly matte makeup <laughs> from that palette. It's interesting, but clearly kind of gimmicky. Um, and again, maybe I'm just too old for that stuff. Maybe they're trying to appeal to like 16 year olds and that's why I'm just not cool enough to understand the concept. I don't know. I mean, you wanna, oh, I can't hear you. Let's go a little message here from Catherine Ellis. There you go. Hi, Catherine. She, she, oh, she says she's in the hospital. Just had brain mapping surgery this morning. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Well, I, I hope that, that this nips whatever is going on with you in the bud. I hope that, you know, you recover well. And, and even yeah. if it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's, an indeterminate period of time. I hope that the discomfort is minimal and I'm glad to know that we're able to kind of help, you know, lighten up your day given everything that you're going through. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's an honor to hang out with you and to be helping you out. So thank you for hanging out with us. Yeah. We're glad you could make it. Definitely. Um, I did swatch this on my floppy, floppy, a little bit too smooth, perfect skin. And it's pretty. And the metallics really look pretty and metallic on this palette. Um, I actually do a lot of research on these before I get going. And I play around with them a lot. And when I actually played around with this palette, I tried to make kind of goth looks. I did kind of like a reverse smoky eye. And I also did like a classic kind of smoky eye because the thing about this palette that will really come across, and it's kind of the opposite of that MAC dusky rose times nine because the mac dusky rose none of the colors are are heavily heavily pigmented to the point where you know you need to be careful you know like it would be a challenge to over apply most of those mac colors that is not the case with this abh palette it is very easy to go too hard with this makeup and i knew that already so i wanted to push it and see how hard i could go and um this noir color this black color is incredibly dark it is very pigmented and in fact most of the colors in this palette and i think the same could be said for most abh eyeshadows they pack a heck of a wallop when it comes to uh, payoff and that is even with a dry application so it's very easy to get heavy-handed with it um the other thing is is that they they kick they give you a lot of kick 
kickback. So they can be quite dusty and they can give you a lot of fallout, but they blend really well. And that's also pretty consistent with almost every ABH eyeshadow I've ever tried. They blend fantastically, but um, it definitely um, is a challenge if you are kind of new to makeup because especially eye makeup because while if you if you're fine blending and you have fun blending and you have good good tools to work with this kind of makeup can be a lot of fun and i would also say the same is true of um you know a lot of uh natasha denona stuff um and huda and uh, several other um eyeshadow brands that are in this ballpark like the payoff of the colors can be really intense and so uh, they can get intimidating <laughs> if, if you're not really uh, used to dealing with really, really pigmented colors. And that's another reason why I like doing this kind of theme for um, eyeshadow live streams, because the challenge of trying to ask, is this a nude eyeshadow, is that in some cases, I have to be very careful about what colors I use and how I use them and how much pressure I'm applying and how much product I'm putting on my face. And sometimes, especially with a palette like this, going overboard is really easy and being understated is hard. And so while it might look like, you know, I'm not really applying that much makeup, it's, it's a challenge to a certain extent with a palette like this, not so much with that MAC palette, the MAC palette is very buildable, and so it goes on a little bit less intensely, and so it's meant for you to keep adding on to it. This will deposit a ton of color right off the bat, even if I'm using a light touch. So I have to be really, really careful with what I do, and I will aim to do that throughout this review. Well, it's not really a review as much as it is, like, just a tutorial, but whatever. Um, what Shelly has a good point that might be a, a useful future video. What brush, brushes do you recommend for a beginner? It depends on what you want to go for. Um, and it also depends on whether or not having um, cruelty-free brushes is very important to you. If you want vegan brushes, I highly recommend Makeup Forever. Um, their brushes are really, really solid. Like, for example, here is a Makeup Forever um, straight detail brush. They have natural wood handles, so you don't want to submerge them when you wash them because this will absorb water and it could damage the brush. But um, as long as you are okay, just cleaning the heads and the handles, like, you know, with a with a cloth maybe, but not necessarily submersion. Um, these are fantastic brushes. They're, like, weight calibrated. So one thing you'll notice when you play around with Makeup Forever brushes is that depending on what they're designed to do, like this is a smudger brush, <coughs> pardon um, like the weight of the handle is different depending on what it's meant to be used for. Um, and I love that. I think that, you know, for example, this little detail brush is feather light, feather light. So these are great synthetic brushes. And, and in the case of this smudger, it's literally my favorite smudger, even though it's synthetic, it's so soft. So they do a brilliant job. Um, they're a little pricey, but if you're looking for cruelty-free synthetic brushes that um, are well-designed. They're just gorgeous. Um, hard to go wrong with MAC brushes, but just keep in mind that they're almost all synthetic and they're not like they used to be. Back when MAC first was a big deal back in like the 90s, their brushes were a little bit better, uh, in my opinion, than what they are now. Um, I feel like they cut a lot of corners to kind of keep the price static. And I think for the price, you're better off going with Makeup Forever because they're in a similar price point, but Makeup Forever's um, makeup brushes are in a slightly better uh, quality. I also think that, and this was some something someone recommended to me, so I, I can't remember offhand. That's why I asked Nigel to join me in the live streams to do things like write down who recommended stuff. So that way if I try it and it works, I can always give people credit for it because I always feel bad mentioning this and then not remembering who recommended it. Um, but this is... Um, Cryolon, and they also have excellent synthetic brushes in their blue line. <clears throat> they're very sturdy, they're professional grade. Um, and this is like a little detail brush. These are not necessarily my favorite to use, but they're little, they have odd shapes for some of them. They have really interesting accessory brushes. So if you have a hole in your collection and you can't fill it with a, with a brush from another line, 
chances are this brand will have a brush that will fill that that void and fit your needs because they they're they're meant for like professional stage makeup artists and stuff like that and they just have all kinds of interesting little brush shapes um my favorite uh natural hair brush line it's kind of a toss-up for face brushes um i'm a big fan of um oh what's it called I like Sonia G's stuff a lot. Like for example, this is a sculpt one. I love her fan brushes. I love I love a lot of her brushes. Her her face brushes are just outrageously good. I also really like her sky brush set, which is the brush set that has the blue handles. I also have a regular set because I just like to test stuff for science, you know. But uh, the the sky set, which is the the blue handle set, it's made for hooded eyes. Huh? It's made for hooded eyes. So this brush set, the, the Sky one with the blue handles, um, all of the brush heads are a little bit smaller than they are in the regular red line of her typical um, makeup brushes. Like this is from her regular line. And so you can, you can get um, a much better handle on you know raising where your crease position is for example which is a key thing to do if you have a little bit of hooding on a round eye like i do you want to really define the crease slightly above where the hood is and it'll really open up your eye um and so you know that the, the smaller brushes really make that easier to do uh, so i highly recommend them and then you know if you just want a good jack of all trades uh eye line Wayne Goss's brush set is really hard to beat in terms of like his eye set for beginners. It's it's very easy to work with and a very very good quality. Well, I'm thinking I'm thinking we've, we're getting a lot of questions on here, um, but I, th I think that would make a, a good uh, option for next week's thing a, a makeup brush tutorial and yeah. things for hooded eyes and what you use the various brushes for and all that. So totally. uh, I've made a note on that. Um, makeup brush tutorial as an option for next week's live stream for this. Yeah. I could I could even narrow down some of my holy grail brushes because there are some brushes that I use over and over and over again. And not all brushes from all lines are made equal. For example, I'm not a huge fan of Wayne Goss's cheek brush. Um, and that's also one that the reviews are kind of mixed on as well. It sheds hair like crazy. And as far as I know, they haven't changed that. But, um, you know, I, I could definitely narrow down some ones that I could highly recommend from various lines and I could try to separate them. Like here are the synthetic ones for folks who, who want to avoid natural hair brushes and for folks who want to just get the softest thing possible. Like, you know, it, and that's really important. Part of the reason why I really like natural hair brushes for my eye makeup in particular is because if you do a lot of blending, you, you want it to not be abrasive on your eye. You don't want to use a lot of pressure and you don't want it to be scratchy. You don't want to use scratchy brushes on your eye area at all because it will absolutely make your eyes look more fatigued. It will make you look older over time. If it pulls on your eye, that's a bad deal. Particularly, you know, you can see I'm I'm 40, so I've got a little bit of fine line action going on down here. And if I'm not careful, you know, I could really make that kind of inflamed and irritated looking if I'm blending with the wrong kind of brushes. That's why when I'm talking about my smudger, I'm like, it's so buttery soft because that's exactly what you want. You want it to actually feel good <laughs> when, you, when you're blending your makeup, almost to the point where you like go into like this Zen place where you're like, ooh, I feel that way sometimes <laughs> when I'm putting on my blush. I'm just like, uh, the brushes are so soft. I'm like, ah, oh, it's like a face massage. It's just, just lovely. <laughs> and, then, and then I have to remind myself I have somewhere to be. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta stop, you know, just enjoying and feeling myself here. Um, but that's Anywho. the scenario, really. Uh, Apollonia has just joined us. Hello. I and uh, Catherine Ellis says, I watch every week video and share only Heather's week videos in cancer support groups and a PCOS group held at the hospital in London, Ontario. And I offer my box to anyone I deliver to patients. Oh, th thank you so very much. Yes, uh, indeed. Thank that, you, Catherine. That's phenomenal. Um, 
you guys are really wonderful. I want to take a moment to just say that. I mean, I know this probably sounds like shameless fan service, but as I've said before, shameless fan service is called that for a reason. There is no shame in it. <laughs> like there's no shame in supporting people who support you back. It's like a virtuous circle. Um, and, you know, just being appreciative of, of, of the great support and loyalty we get from everyone <laughs> and <laughs> the friendliness and everything. It's just great. <laughs> Cheers us right up. It's so genuine too. And that that's the other thing. It's like, you know, so like today, today has been gonzo nuts because we've been doing a lot of physical moving around. We can talk about this more tomorrow if you're interested, but yeah, we, we, we can talk about this more tomorrow, but it has <laughs> been a heck of a day. Let me just say, <laughs> everything been, seemed to be going all right. And then one thing led to another, led to another. And then suddenly the, the 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 faucet on the side of our house we attached to our hose just decided to up and break on us and all sorts of things going on. So, yeah. We have a moat around our house. That's super fun. <laughs> you know, I'll call a handyman like, like 20 minutes before this live stream arrived. He came and fixed it for us. It was literally, you know, oh, no, nail biter. Is it going to be done by the time we have to go live? <laughs> yeah. So one last, th one last comment. And then uh, I think, shall we uh, crack on? Yeah, for sure. Catherine says, Heather and Nigel are the best team. Thank you. Thank and you. And you deserve the business. We love you in Canada. Love that I can deliver. Seriously, thank you, Catherine. Yes, thank you. And and uh, Catherine says, um, uh, what a day, but you are still smiling. I'm smiling because I'm talking to you guys. Like it's, That and we've had alcohol. All that too, but it's genuinely uplifting. I mean, it's not. You know what I mean, Nigel. Like, I know. You are such a dude. No, it's. I'm like, trying to make people laugh. It works. Uh, you are quite charming. Um, that's. Uh, <laughs> no. I nice look at and you're fun. Um, but no, it's it's nice to just hang out with people mm. who have similar interests and who are familiar with us and we're, we're familiar with you. And it's just. It's it seems very real, you know what I mean? I know I know people are like, oh, it's just a parasocial relationship, but when it's a small group of people and it's like the same people every week, we get to know you and you get to really know us, and it's like we're having an actual conversation. And I love that. It's just it's just so instantly energizing compared to basically every other part of my business. So well, aside from seeing pictures of people in my wigs, that's actually pretty pretty energizing. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah, we both get a big kick out of that. But uh, I think I think it's just a lovely thing to have this time together. Speaking yeah. Speaking <laughs> of which, speaking of which, something I want to mention. Yes. Uh, now that we've got forty one people watching, this is a good way to reach people. Uh, Barbara Waite had a handy tip in the comment section ah. of one of our recent videos. Uh, it's about not getting notified by YouTube of impending live stream. She says, I'm wondering if a lot of people don't realize you need to both click on the bell and choose all. Once I began doing that, I've been notified of every live stream you do. So, yeah, if, if you're wondering about why you're signed up and subscribed and not getting any notifications, see if there's that that you need to do. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll go from there. Now, this time around, I did send out an email reminder to people just because we also la launched Jacinda and I want to show people that we were kind of tying them together a little bit. But uh, I try to get away from doing a lot of extra marketing for the marketing because uh, that's just the Ugh, Marketing for marketing, very meta. I mean, it would make sense if I were trying to be just like a professional influencer, but this is kind of like, you know, the, the fun goofing off hobby side of things at this point. And... The, well, you, I don't have to tell you, Nigel, because you, you are in the thick of it with me with the, the product wrangling and the photo taking and the, all of the other things as well. Boy, am I ever. It's building my muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, <sighs> too. There's just still kind of crowded out by the wobbly bingo wings, but. I'm strong like bull. Let's put on some makeup, shall we? Let's um, do that. Yeah, I I deliberately like to challenge myself. And this particular eyeshadow palette, I'm going to remove you, honey, so I can show everybody my face. Um, I like to challenge myself a little bit with these eyeshadow palettes because, um, you know, that's half the fun. This is not necessarily a warm tone palette, but it isn't as cool as my shirt or my lipstick. Th these are both very much like cool tone pinks, like blue based pinks. And when I hold this up against my face, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. Like, this is a lot cooler than most of the stuff that's going on here. 
And that's part of the fun. Like, do I actually have nudes for you? Um, so is it nude? And by that, I mean, can I make a neutral look with this palette? Is it work appropriate? Could you wear it to church, etc.? cetera? Um, and then the second test, I'm gonna pair it with three different wigs back here. Um, and that is to figure out, is it neutral? As in, does it work? Does the look I come up with work with this shirt, those wigs? Does it all kind of go together? You know, if the makeup acts like the rug in the Big Lebowski and it ties it all together, then we know we're onto a really nice, solid, neutral eyeshadow palette. Um, so, uh, tonight's wig is our Jacinda which is in a regular styles I mentioned at the beginning of this live stream. If you missed that, you'll hit it on the replay. If, if you watch this one, it's over. Um, you know, this one did not pass my quality control. So if nothing else, I hope you guys get the impression um, from wigs like our irregular Jacinda um, or our irregular Bardot that was in Tahitian Sunset that I'm being very, very meticulous about the quality controls. And I'm, I'm almost always getting a second or third opinion involved if I find that something doesn't pass the, 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 the old snuff test, you know? So, um, and in this case, I felt like it was a little thin on top. So I'm offering it for a discount because I still think people might like wearing it. I think that it could be a really great like play wig or one that you could turn into a halo or one that if you're willing to style it, you could really make something magical happen. But, uh, because it would require that extra work, we're offering it a discount and I'm showing it off in three of the most vulnerable colors for that kind of discount to show or um, for that kind of um, flaw to show up, which is Peach Bellini R, Moonlit Orchid R and Polar Ice R. And you can also see the flaw um, in the um, Harlow Blonde, but I have pictures of that on the listing. So if you want to see up close and personal what I'm talking about, I not only show an image of what the flaw looks like, but what it looks like when you style it a little bit better. So that way you can see that it's still workable. It's just when you first get it home and put it on, she might look a little naked on top, hence why she's only 25 bucks. So shameless self-promotion achieved. <laughs> so um, I think that before we get to the eyeshadow palette, I also want to remind you that we're doing a giveaway. And the giveaway is for a wig back here. This is actually an Eva by uh, Aesthetica Luxuria. The color is R4. It was custom cut to be a 16 inch wavy lob. The hair is in great condition. It's, it's basically in beautiful condition. It's shiny, it's pretty, it moves really well. Full lace wig, lace front. It's a great wig. I haven't worn it. I bought it to wear it, had it styled for myself to wear it and just you know, who am I kidding? I like synthetics better because they're easier. So this was just sitting in my closet. That's sad. It needs a home. So we're going to give it away. Um, so we will be dropping a clue about that as we talk. I've told Nigel to just kind of randomly interrupt me while I'm applying my makeup to give you guys not only the secret password that you need to remember, but also uh, once he does that, I will give you the next step in the instructions. And um, if you're keeping track of all those things, it'll tell you not only how to enter, but the secret words you need to know as part of your entry. And we will tell you next week in the last installment of this contest series, um, how all these things will tie together. And it will be incredibly dumb. <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend like this is clever. Like, we're literally just trying to make it silly uh, just to see if people are paying attention. So once you get all the clues, you're going to be like, oh, God, Heather, why? Why did you do this? And the answer is just to see if people were paying attention. That's why I made it as, as random and nonsensical as possible. And maybe it'll make people smile, hopefully. Um, all right, let's put some makeup on. I'm going to start with this tempera color, which is this kind of... Um, flesh tone. It's like a really soft, creamy peach. Now you can see I went into it with this Sonia G Blender Pro, right? And this is a really nice domed blending brush. Um, so, you know, I could use a brush to kind of lay this down, but I actually really like using this for some of these matte colors. And do you see how, how that kind of crumbled instantly when the brush went into it? I didn't even have to apply that much pressure. So it's really soft, really prone to crumbling, really prone to kickback. So tap off, make sure you tap off for sure. Um, 
and I'm just going to gently put some of that all up in here. This is a very soft, fluffy brush. I'm not really trying to make it super opaque, which is why I opted for this particular brush and not like a typical brush that one might use to lay down a color. Um, maybe put a little bit more right on the main lid area here. And I'm just kind of like making this motion. I'm not actually just sweeping it around and try to fill in some of these fine lines. If I can just inter interject while you're doing that, my sweet. Sure. Catherine Ellis says, good luck to my American friends. But I want to point out, Catherine, and you will you will like this. The contest is open to the U.S. and Canada. Yep. And the U.K. and Australia. Yes. But if you're outside the U.S., you you might be you will be responsible for duties, taxes, and shipping costs. Okay. We're hiding the wig. If you're international, the rest is up to you. Now, of course, because we're giving it away for free, we'll still mark it as a gift because it is. Um, yeah. But you're eligible. You're eligible. That's right. As long as you are okay with that part of things, we are okay with you participating. Yeah. So how's that for good news, Catherine? And the thing is, there there aren't a ton of people who watch these live streams. So even if you're you're here, they're like, um, right now there are how many people in here? 41 people. So even if all 41 people entered, your chances would be very, very good. Like super solid. Um, and all of the steps of entry are absolutely free. Um, I tried to make sure that no one would have to actually buy anything to participate. In fact, I will do that now. Entry free. Watch the live streams or the replays every Friday in May for clues. Solve the puzzle to be entered into the drawing. Winner will be announced during the live stream on June 4th, 2021. You have such a good voice for radio and for announcing stuff. Like, you were seriously amazing at that, Nigel. Why, thank you, my treasure. <laughs> and now. And now, Epic Makeup. Um, I'm going to go into this Dusty Rose. I'm using a MAC 217. Well, do I want to use a MAC 217? I want one that's got kind of a flat edge. So I might, might sub that out for this Wayne Goss one. We're going to go with the number six. And this is actually a little bit flatter. So here's my 217. This is an older brush. It's when they had natural hair versions of this brush. So it's a little bit worse for wear because it's like a decade old. This one's a little bit newer a little bit more compact. So I'm going to run with that. And in this case, I'm going to start building up my crease. You know, I'm just going to do a classic soft nude eye look, nothing too adventurous. And I'm going to really emphasize this area in here with this dusty rose color. So I'm just kind of take this flat edge and kind of tap it in there. You don't have to apply much pressure at all. See how I didn't ha actually apply that much pressure and I still got dust coming off of this. Very fragile formulation here. And again, make sure you tap off with this brand. So because I'm trying to raise where my, my crease is, or at least the appearance of it, like you can see if I actually like furrow my brow a little bit, <laughs> like I have to actually like, like this a little bit, um, you can see the hood a little bit more than, you know, when my eyes are relaxed. So you can see I got a little bit more of a hood on this side than I do on this side. But in either case, you know, there's a little bit of extra skin there. And I really want to emphasize like this natural sort of depression. So in this case, I'm going to take this brush and I only put product on this side. So the part that's going inside and up. So it's not on this side, on the underside at all, just on this top side. And just gently... Depositing that a little bit higher up, but not all the way up here. And I intentionally avoided um, plucking my eyebrows today because um, I kind of want to, like I was inspired by Prince because he's got a, a eyeshadow palette that's being released um, later this upcoming week. And I'm definitely buying it, even if, um, you know, he was a Mac cosmetics user and I don't know if he ever used Urban Decay. I don't care. I like Urban Decay enough and Prince enough that I will go with it. But, um, uh, you know, one thing he used to always do was he would hit the mic intentionally during every performance, even that famous Super Bowl performance. He would hit the mic or he would, um, I'm just going to grab a big fluffy 
soft brush and just gently blend that a little bit more. Um, so he would intentionally hit the mic so people would know that he was actually singing and that it wasn't um, a lip sync. And so I thought this would be a nifty way to show you that I'm not using a filter. Here, let me turn this light back on because if you can see the little hairs down here or my eyebrows growing back in, that's how you can tell. That's Those sort of tells are the things that you can use to see if somebody's using a filter or not. I don't ever use a filter, at least if there's one in the camera, I'm not aware of it. So that little asterisk there, but just know I have not enabled any filters. And if, if I find out that there is one on here, I will try to remove it, but you should be able to see this zit that I covered up. <laughs> this zit that I covered up over here, you know, because what's the point of being good at makeup if I'm going to cheat like that? Like I'm working pretty hard to, to hone in on these skills. So uh, I want, I wanted to show. Um, so today I want you to know why my eyebrows probably look a little bit less than perfect. All right. I am, I'm building this a little bit. So I'm going in twice. And then going in with that big fluffy brush afterwards. And by doing the what I'm doing right now, I'm not limiting to myself, not limiting myself to where that skin actually is. You can see that that I'm actually putting that that um, dusty rose color slightly above where the hood is. That will help open up my eye and make them look a little bit more even. Were you gonna say something, honey? I was going to say, in both looks and loose lips, we are unfiltered in every possible sense of the term. Yes. <laughs> it's true. <clears throat> um, though, though it's even more evident on Saturdays over on Sister Weeks 2, 6 o'clock. We'll be doing it tomorrow as well. And tomorrow it's going to be another kind of like, I, I the ones that I think everybody seems to enjoy the most, most of the time are ones where we just kind of riff and, and chat with each other. And so um, tomorrow, I believe what's winning is uh, cool vacation stories. So we're just going to share really cool vacation stories with one another, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. So I want to know, which way I want to go. Cause right now I'm still kind of going along with the color story of what's on my shirt, but I need to get a little bit more adventurous with this, I think. So, Hmm. I'm going to interrupt you because Bettina says eyebrows. What eyebrows? <laughs> and you know what? That's a great time to interrupt with our secret word of the day for the contest. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you'll see where I'm going with this in a second, because today, the secret <laughs> word for the contest entry is woolly bears. <laughs> yeah, you know those fuzzy, those thick fuzzy caterpillars that look like Eugene Levy's eyebrows? The heck of a segue. <laughs> woolly bears. <laughs> that, was, that was well done. That was well done. There. I saw the chance. I went for it. Just <laughs> like everything good in my life. Eh? 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 Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm taking this, this kind of big blending brush. This is a Wayne Goss 18. And you might be like, why are you putting all of these on such big fluffy blending brushes? Well, as I, I mentioned earlier, I could be using something like, like this. You know, this is a Sonya G Builder 1. It's meant to help you build up your eye makeup. This has very, very dense bristles. They're soft, you know, they're natural fiber. Um, but the thing is like, because it's got such dense bristles and I know that this eyeshadow packs a wallop when it comes to payload, I'm going to look like I'm going to a nightclub if I try to apply it with really, really compact brushes that are typically used for depositing color. So I'm using fluffier diffuse brushes, as I mentioned earlier, on purpose because it's going to give me a lighter touch with the application. So for this one, I'm going with the Wayne Goss 18, which again has a slightly um, ovoid, slightly flat ferrule, which is the the, the shape of the, the way the head 
of the brush is positioned and holds the bristles together. You can see it's kind of flat here and kind of wide here, but it's still slightly domed and it's still really nice and fluffy. And I'm going to grab this rose pink because the challenge is we're going to try to keep it nude looking or at least kind of like soft. And I'm just going to go on the outside here with it. Just tap, tap, tap. This is a very pretty metallic rose color, like a soft, cool rose. But you could see if I, if I over applied it and here, I'll just kind of demonstrate. If I put this on this builder one and I do the exact same thing where I tap in, look at how much product that picked up. That's a ton of product. And if I use the exact same amount of pressure, and I'm only going into this level of detail because people were asking about brushes. So if this is boring, let me know. But see how little product this picked up compared to this. And let me swipe it on my hand so you can kind of see. That's what that does with that builder brush. And that's what it does with the fluffy one. So the tools you use and the amount of pressure you apply where you hold the brush matters. That's another thing you got to keep in mind. If you're holding the brush up here, you're going to get a lot more pressure. If you're holding it far out, like if your goal is to apply a nude eyeshadow, you're going to hold the brush kind of like here-ish or out here because it'll give you a little bit less pressure and the application is going to be a lot softer. I hope this is this is good info. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I'm going to go in with that and just duplicate the same thing on the other side. Just tap, tap, tap a -roo. Happy little eye makeup. <laughs> Jody says, I too am getting the Prince collection. I have already warned my husband. <laughs> I mean, some things in life are just inevitable. And essentially anything with Prince on it, I'm. it's like a law. I have to buy it. Same thing with Queen or Freddie Mercury. Even if it's cheesy, I'm still going to buy it. It's they they know me too well. It's like they're they're targeting me with laser precision with this stuff. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it. So there we go. I'm happy they're coming out with two different palettes, though, because one looks a little bit more bold and the other one looks like it's got it basically looks more muted than their ultraviolet. Um, naked ultraviolet pelt that they came out with. I hope I'm, I'm wrong. I have the naked ultraviolet. I bought it at a 50% off sale. So I'll, I'll compare them, I think, and just see, you know, what's up. Well, I'll say this, my sweet. If, if they're going to make stuff we want, heck yeah, why not buy it? Oh, we've yep. got someone joining us here. Helen says, hi all from Brisbane. Oh, I love it. Another Aussie. Hi. It's nice yes, to have you. Yes, indeed. Kathleen says, I've learned a lot from you. I love getting tricks from it all. I should say that to my husband as well about the Prince palette. <laughs> and Cheryl asks an excellent question. Where can the Prince palette be bought? I, I'm going to get it directly from Urban Decay's website. And I signed up for them to give me like a notification as soon as it launches. So I'm going to be waiting with bated breath. I believe it's launching on the 25th. Um, and I'm going to basically be stalking that website. Uh, so as soon as like 1201 hits, boom, I'm on it. Um, Sharon says, Heather, you look gorgeous. Hi, Nigel. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. And thank you so much. It's very sweet. Jody says, but I mean, no shadow called Purple Rain and no little red Corvette Lippy. Well, what about Raspberry Beret? Right. Oh, these are all valid points. Like, they're missing an opportunity. I mean, they should come up with, like, an expansion set or something. But if they're going to make it thematic, they should really... Prince was all about branding. He was all about... He knew how to brand himself. He knew how to craft an image. And that's that's one thing where they're kind of letting his legacy down a little bit, I mm. think, just on preliminary looking at it. Because, seriously, he knew how to how to do that like even if you watch his old 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 interviews back when he was with the revolution back when purple rain was a thing he intentionally played it very aloof and cool and almost like a cat waiting to pounce you know he was an an intentional enigma where you were like who is this guy and that was intriguing <laughs> like i've said i said this before in the last live stream but i find it interesting that for the mortal Kombat video games they created a purple-clad ninja called Rain. Yes. 
purple rain and he was a prince of the realm of Adenia. So, <laughs> yeah yeah oh and uh deirdre says love your nails what color and brand uh i just did these today um and i bought the uh glitter that i use because this is actually glitter and then i just shellacked the crap out of it um i i bought it on amazon so we'll have to take a picture nigel and put that stuff up on instagram so people can get the name of it um by the way just just so you know what i'm doing at the moment because i'm still kind of trying to carve out a little bit of a crease without going too heavy-handed with it i am using a tiny teeny itty bitty little little blending brush. This is a Wayne Goss 20 and it's really nice and fluffy, but it's just got a small little head to it. And I'm just tapping it into this color called Rustic, which is right here. Sorry, so, sh show that again because my face was covering that. Oh, it's a Wayne Goss 20 and I'm tipping it, uh, I'm dipping it, just tapping it gently into Rustic. And look at all the, all the eyeshadow that is collecting in this little well here. Can you see that? Yeah, Very dusty on this. A lot of scatter, but I just wanted to say there's uh, we got a new person joining us. Believer Girl says, My first time here, great info. Thanks. Hi, welcome oh, aboard. Nice to have you with us. Thank you for, for giving us a try. Um, so on, on this side, so you can kind of so I can kind of narrate what I did over here because I went a little heavy with that dusty rose on the inside. I want to give it just a little bit more definition up here on the outside and note that i'm not taking this all the way down i put that i put the um the rose pink which is kind of like a metallic rose gold almost i put that down here and with this i'm looking for where the natural brow occipitus is so it's like where the bone ends and the squishy bit begins right and so I'm not going by where the skin is because the skin is droopy on this eye. Um, I've got a little bit of hooding. So I'm just kind of looking for where that that bone sits. And sometimes you gotta kind of make funny faces in the mirror a little bit, kind of figure that out. But it's right here. And you don't wanna aim too high because if you aim too high and then you blend, you're gonna end up with that dark color all the way up here, which won't open up your eye. It'll just look like a mess. So I'm going to use a small brush head and just kind of hit that right here. And then I was taking another brush and just kind of blending it a little bit, but not too much, you know, just softening it up. And I'm going to be right back because I drank a lot of tea earlier today. <laughs> That's so very English up here. All right, so because I was talking and not paying attention to what I was doing, I just did exactly what I said I was not going to do, but that's kind of why I like doing these live streams. And it allows me to kind of show off a little bit of what this palette is really, really good for. And it's good for people who like to blend because this makeup blends really beautifully. So I'm actually going to show you how I would correct this. And I'm taking my finger, my finger is relatively clean, and I'm just gently wiping some of that down. And then I'm gonna go back over here. And I have to make a funny face really to lift up that hood a little bit. I'm not trying to place it under the hood. I'm just trying to get this to be as consistent with the other side as possible, which is difficult when you have more skin on one side than the other. So just be patient and use as little product as you can get away with at a time which is really tricky with these abh palettes because as i mentioned earlier they they definitely have a lot of of wallop to the color payload and i may have made this look not like a nude makeup <laughs> so i'm just going to try to gently blend out these edges a little bit you can see I'm not closing this up, you know, like I'm not taking this all the way down. And part of that is strategic based on the products that I'm using, like this ABH palette, because I've swatched it. I've played around with it quite a bit over the last week. I even made a video that I need to edit um, for my Patreon subscribers that is um, 
about this palette. Like it, it can look really intense very quickly. And I'm kind of suspecting that, you know, if I use a little bit of liner strategically down here, this will even it out and it will look really cool. So we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of um, this highbrow by Benefit. I use it once in a while to highlight my brow area. And as I mentioned earlier, you can kind of see that I've got hair that I intentionally let sit there um, without plucking it. So that way you could see that I'm not using a filter. So I'm going to cover some of that up. <laughs> That's another thing that this product is really good for. It's kind of opaque and creamy. And it'll help make that look a little bit less uh, not cute. <laughs> so I'm just going to use my finger to tap that in a little bit. Same over here. And I'm using, I used a, an Urban Decay brow blade and the color that I used today um, for my brows was uh, brown sugar, which is kind of like a medium golden brown color. But it's not super gold, so it doesn't clash with my shirt or anything. I might even take a little bit of this here just kind of further open that up. And just use my finger to kind of tap that in. All righty. And then I think all I want to do next is just put a little bit of a highlight color in here with my finger. And after playing around with this, and I'll show you the two colors that are good contenders, I'm going to swatch them both with, um, with my finger. So this one here is called Fairy and it's kind of like a yellow gold color. And this one is called Glistening, which is almost like, um, it's more of a, a gold, you know, than, than it is a yellow. Whereas this is very bright, vibrant, pretty yellow. They're, they're pretty similar. And, you know, and I'll stand up and see if that helps a little bit. They're pretty yeah, that's better. But you can see the one's a little bit brighter than the other one, right? Um, so, this is this is a warm color for sure um and that's that's one negative thing about this palette if there is one and that is that they don't have any cool tones that you can use as the highlight if you're gonna go with the highlight all the tones are are warm um and then uh the, i mean that's not the issue with the sultry palette that i broke out earlier you can see this has a lot more cool tones to it right it has silvers in it which is interesting because you wouldn't get that from the packaging. <laughs> uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the sultry color that is in this soft glam palette is not in the sultry palette, which is an interesting um, convention there. I think I'm gonna go with fairy because it's a little bit brighter. But you can see why I didn't wanna put that up here. I don't wanna put gold up here in my highlight because I'm wearing a cool tone shirt with cool tone lips, cool tone cheeks. And it's not the 1970s. Yeah, though I do kind of love that look. I do. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt here just to uh, say from Helen, I have like five thumbs on each hand, but I enjoy watching you do this stuff, even though I always just smear the stuff on with some of my thumbs. You know what? That's fun, too. And, I, you know, I enjoy watching other people put makeup on, and sometimes I just put makeup on because it's fun to do. Like, it's just fun to play around, and the sensation of it. It's very relaxing. There's just something very soothing about watching people put on their makeup and watching people like do their hair. And there's something very soothing about doing it yourself if, if you're inclined to do that. Um, it's just, it gets you out of your head. And, and because it's got that transformative quality, it's just intriguing to watch how it kind of unfolds slowly in front of you. It's just a very nifty thing. So you can see I'm, I'm not using a ton of pressure or a ton of product. I'm going in a little bit at a time and I'm keeping it down below where I put that crease in. So a little bit is going on the hood, just a little bit. Hang on a second. I'm going to give you a full screen, but I'm going to interrupt with Catherine's comment. I have a shy hospital roommate watching. She would like to know how to pick good makeup and wigs for swimming or tricks like a hat. For bigger head, they have a beach and lake swim on their boat. Oh, 
well, she's come to the right place. I mean, I have a big head too, so no shame in that. My my cap circumference is 23 and a half inches, um, which is why a lot of my wigs that I make tend to fit a little bit bigger as opposed to most of the, the wigs in the medical side of the industry, which fit a little bit on the small side. Um, just because, you know, I've struggled with that personally too. And if the wig is too small, it feels like it's going to go boop right off your head. Like it feels like it's going to project itself like off your head, like you're on a trampoline. Um, it's just a really unnerving sensation to have to grab it by the ear tabs every 20 seconds ago, you know? So, and plus it gives you headaches and stuff. Um, when it comes to um, wigs that you can wear out boating or swimming and stuff like that, that's tricky. It's tricky because the chlorine, uh, I can talk specifically if you're going to a pool where they use chlorine in the water, because that can be very damaging um, for human hair. It's definitely pretty damaging. And anybody who's ever gone swimming with their own hair and then had it feel like straw afterwards can attest to the, the effects that chlorine will have on human hair in general. Um, that's not different from a wig. A wig's going to have that plus some because it's got, you know, additional processing involved than just the hair growing out of your head might have. Um, but uh, swimming in pools is tricky with a wig. I always recommend buying something that's inexpensive. And what I do typically is I sew them like halos into wig caps. And I usually get really goofy wig caps because I'm like, I, I have a soft spot for like Esther Williams fashion and stuff like that. But um, there are lots of wigs on the market that are inexpensive. And I'm talking like the $20, $30 range. And those are probably your best bet for wearing in a pool. Because if you ruin them, eh, you could just get another one. But it, it breaks my heart when I hear stories about people who are wearing, you know, three, $400 wigs in the pool. I'm like, oh, no, you're going to ruin it. Uh, well, Cheryl says, I think Sister Wigs has a cool swim cap with flower shapes all over it. I've yeah. seen that somewhere because I want to swim soon. Yeah, and we might have to get more of those because I don't I don't know if we have more now, but I love really vibrant colors and retro anything. Uh, I know that that was something that was real trendy in the early aughts and people make fun of me for liking it now. I don't care. Uh, the Manic Pixie Dream Girl fashions will live forever in Heatherville because I just, I love the kind of ultra femme retro vibe. It's very cute and it's flattering on most people. Uh, all right, so you can see this is what I've ended up with. It's very soft. It's got a little bit of the gold. It's got a little bit of the rose gold. You can see that we've used a little bit of a darker color here. I'm not going to line just so that way um, I can get a little bit of extra definition. Now I got to figure out what liner I want to use. I think I might just use a coal liner. So this is a NARS coal liner. Let me put it on my hand a little bit. Yeah, this is good still. Um, I always check my coal liners and my eyeliner pencils before I put them on me because if they're a little bit too hard, which will happen as, as you have them over time, they kind of oxidize and they get harder. Um, as they harden up, you want to get rid of them. Um, and not necessarily because they're going to hurt your eye, but because, again, that's very abrasive up against sensitive parts of your skin. And you want to avoid that because um, it's just going to lead to irritation and it's going to make your eye look inflamed, which is not really going to make your makeup look any better. And it doesn't feel good. So. All righty. I'm going to just smudge that a little bit. I'm not going to put a ton on here. Breaking out that Makeup Forever smudger I mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the swim cap is sold out, it looks like, so... Um, I have to get more, because that, yeah. that one is one that we stocked last year for um, summer, and it sold really well. People mm. really liked it. Dawn says, hi, Heather. Hi, Dawn. I like using these coal liners, um, particularly when I'm in a hurry, because you don't need to be precise with them, you know, especially if you're planning to just smudge them. You can just kind of put them on there and just smudge them up and go. I'm not lining all the way. I'm not lining the bottom. I'm not lining the inside. I'm just lining this edge. And that is because I have round eyes. And if you ever wonder how you can tell what eye shape you have, well, um, Round eyes, it's actually pretty easy to tell. If I look straight forward and like I, I gotta make I gotta kinda 
sit here and stare, stare straight forward instead of staring in the camera aperture. If I stare straight forward, you can actually see a little bit of the white on the underside of my eye. That's the giveaway. If you know, I'm not looking down or any of that stuff. If I just look straight forward at myself in a mirror, I can see a little bit of the white exposed under my eye. That is almost always a dead giveaway that you have a round eye shape because none of the other eye shapes will, will have that effect. Um, and the ideal eye shape aesthetically, at least according to most of these beauty books that I've been studying, is an almond eye shape or something close to that. And so by putting a little bit of a liner on the outside, it kind of it kind of makes the line of my eye a little bit different. It kind of like makes this line go from this way, which is the way it is naturally, to this way, which kind of gives it almost like a more almond-like impression. I mean, it's not gonna change my eye shape, obviously, but it's all about manipulating the angles of your face to get to a more aesthetically ideal place you know, within limits. And another thing that's really great about cool liners is that they tend to be very forgiving, like smudgy, soft liners. Even using your shadow as a liner tends to be a much more forgiving thing to do than using um, really precise lines. That is very difficult. I do a lot of precision eyeliner looks um, when I'm practicing, and that's because I need the practice. But for every day, I don't necessarily recommend it because, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but your makeup will look flawless. You get to the point where you have to put your eyeliner on, you try to do a really cute cat's eye, and then you make a gigantic mess and it takes you 20 minutes to clean up. And next thing you know, you're late for whatever you were running to. So you won't really have that issue if you just stick with this kind of soft smudgy thing <laughs> that I'm doing right now. I'm going to interrupt for a second and say, mention that, where is it here? It moved. This is a shout out to Catherine Ellis's uh, hospital ward friend, Lila. So, hi, Lila. Hi, Lila. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, let's see. I'm going to put on the... I, I really like this mascara. I've been experimenting with all kinds of different mascaras and liners lately because some of them really irritate my eyes. Um, and I really like, and especially waterproof ones, um, can be very irritating. I... And by the way, I hate buildable fibers. I don't know if you guys have tried mascaras with buildable, buildable fibers, but I hate them because they they break off into the fibers, get crusty, and they literally flake off into my eye. And I wear contact lenses when I do these things. That is really uncomfortable. So I don't know why they don't give more disclaimers on those kinds of mascaras, but I cannot recommend them if you wear contact lenses. They're awful. Um, yeah, I've been seeing, I've been watching those, those, those build up mascara things and i thought when that dries out that is going to be horrible and oh, brutal yeah are they t is that the same stuff that um uh they talk about spider clump lashes you can get that look with those kinds of mascaras but uh i think that was basically its own kind of trend and it's mm. kind of like um I, I don't even know what that was about, that whole trend. I mean, I thought it was maybe a generational thing where I was like, I was always taught that like having the Tammy Faye lashes was a bad thing, <laughs> you know? Um, but apparently for a minute there, like five, six years ago, that was the thing. I never did that, you know? I never did that. And I'm kind of proud of the fact that I, I didn't do that. Um, yeah, me neither. But uh, no, the buildable lash thing, I think is just to make it look like you're wearing false lashes. Uh, for example, Maybelline has a version of it called the falsies and I've tried it multiple times. It looks great when you first put it on, but then the longer you wear it and the more you blink, the more it just kinds of falls all over your face. And uh, you know, I don't like fallout like that. I am so using the L'Oreal Paris Voluminous Waterproof Mascara and this is in black brown. This is a really solid, waterproof mascara um you know it's not necessarily um a buildable fiber one so that's why i like it because it kind of makes it look thicker without adding any of that extra stuff and it will stay on there all night which i also really appreciate it and i chose 
a black brown instead of a, a solid actual black mascara because the rest of this look is very soft and I kind of wanted to make all of it really nice and soft and consistent. Oh, I have one pesky eyelash that just did not want to curl. Hey, Nigel, honey. Yes, you're so, f yeah. Um, in, in the bathroom, there is um, a little purple electronic thing on the um, bathroom counter. Can you bring that to me? It'll look a little bit like a, a pen or something, but no it's worries on it. Thank you. Um, what I'm having him grab is a heated eyelash curler because I don't know if you can see, but I have this little eyelash right here that does not want to curl. And it is kind of pointing, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to flick you off accidentally. It's kind of pointing downward. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna use a heated eyelash curler, which I try not to use all the time, but it's really great for grabbing these sort of pesky little hairs that are really stubborn. This thing? That is the one. Go okay, on. it's blue, not purple, but you knew what I meant anyway, because you're I made of- you like because I am smart. You are smart. That's why I like you, among other things. Um, so I went ahead and turned this on and the back end of it is purple. It'll turn pink when it's warm. So I'm just going to let that sit there and then I'll, I'll get that guy. And these can be used when you, uh, after you apply your mascara. In fact, one of the recommended uses on the packaging is that you can use this if your mascara gets clumpy and you can use the, the heated eyelash curler to kind of separate the lashes. It warms up the mascara a little bit and kind of separates them out. Hang on. Got to interject here. Lark says, I really enjoy you guys. I'm first time chatter, but been watching for months. Well, thanks. Thanks, Lark. Thanks for chiming in, Lark. Great having you here. Thanks for dropping by and uh, glad you're having a good time. And I'm going to move aside so Heather can actually be seen on her own screen. <laughs> well, I have a bad habit sometimes when I'm applying my mascara. Not, well, I, I make the face. Everybody makes the face. I'm like, well, I'm applying it. But sometimes I look a little bit too far down. So I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just gently putting that on there. And I always keep a tissue on me while I'm doing this to kind of wipe the end of it off. So that way I can do this with it kind of vertically. Shauna says, smiley face team Heather and Nigel. I found a great small business to support with a side benefit, <laughs> side benefit of helping me deal with my hair loss. Well, that's fantastic. I, I See, it's the virtuous circle. Again, it's like, we're helping you. You're helping us. We're just keeping that energy and that vibe flowing. It's fantastic stuff. Yeah, er, it was, it's so amazing too. I mean, it. I, I really mean it. Like we, the, the hose outside broke and we temporarily had a little moat outside our house and the handyman had to come and frantically fix it before the live stream and, and turn off all the water to the house amazing you could like because we were so stressed out and then as soon as the camera goes on and we see that people are here and we're hanging out and we start talking it's like all that just disappears and it's just, again you know, the alcohol helps nigel why why do you have to make people laugh oh my goodness again you are such a dude because i'm trying to have a hallmark moment here <laughs> I don't do a Hallmark moment. Clearly, because you're like... A Not in public, anyway. Go ahead and just destroying my cheesy, heartfelt sentiment. <laughs> oh, man. But I make you laugh. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> but seriously, you are such a dude. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I think, I think my thingy might be done warming up. So we're gonna give that a little, a little try here with this little pesky hair. It's pink, hooray. Now, one thing about um, heated eyelash curlers is you gotta be careful because they do get hot. Like it won't burn your, the skin on my hand. Like it doesn't get that hot, but your eye area is really sensitive. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not like poking yourself in the eye, but you're also not, um, you know, jamming this into, you know, your tear duct or your water line. So I'm just going to, I got to make a face to do this. So I'm going to be making some goofy faces. So, um, 
I can't really talk while I'm doing this, Nigel. So I'm just gonna let you guys know what I'm doing. I'm kind of using the prongs on this thing and I'm gonna kind of scoop it up a little bit in the prong. So this is what it'll look like on that side. It's like, whoop, whoop. I'm just scooping it up. And then I gotta hold it in place for about three to four seconds. Gently move it up a little bit, three to four seconds, and then I stop. So I don't know if you can see that little hair, but I'm gonna be grabbing her. So. Cheryl asks, what brand of curler is it? This is a Panasonic. I just got it off of Amazon. It was Amazon's choice. Yeah. Team alcohol, lol, says Shauna. Hey, it's Friday. And it was definitely past five o'clock, so it's within bounds. <laughs> I have to say, my sweet, that that never was a thing. I mean, some people say you have to wait till the sun's up over the yard arm, but no. Okay. If it's the weekend and you don't have any other engagements, why not just enjoy yourself? All right. I think I finally got it. It was being very tricky and I was having difficulty scooping it up. So I had to like hold my, my um, eyelid up with my finger because I did not want to jab myself in the eye. This is also a really great thing to have on hand if you have eyes, uh, eyelashes rather, that no matter how well you curl them, they, they don't hold the curl for more than like a couple minutes before they go flat and straight down again. Um, on high humidity days, mine flatten out very quickly. And I find that if I curl my lashes with a regular lash curler first and then I use this thing, it will hold. It, it is actually really great. But I usually wait till uh, I'm done curling my lashes even with this thing before I put my mascara on. Okay, I've got to interject here. Um, let's see. Catherine says, is the Patreon link broken? Lila has a screen that says, oh no, it's not found. So give me a second. Um, that should be Patreon slash Sister Wigs. Patreon slash Sister Wigs. Yes. There we go. See, see how that opened that right up? I might even duplicate that a little bit on this side just because I like the way that looks. Um, yeah. We've also had people discussing a uh, tattooed eyeliner on here. Um, Why has anybody done that? I'm so curious. Okay, Elaine says, I have tattooed eyeliner. It just makes eyes look rounder, but it's awesome. Other than that, oh, and it hurts getting it. Oh, I bet. I bet that hurt like a like a son of a gun because that's such a sensitive area. Same thing with lips. I bet that hurts wicked bad. I bet that that's very, very painful. How long did it take before your eyes stopped being puffy from that? Because I imagine that it probably got really irritated for a while. Okay. But I bet it makes eye makeup a lot easier because you don't have to worry about your liner anymore. <laughs> Every once in a while I think about microblading because I'm like, wow, it'd be a breeze to do my eyebrows. They'd already be done every day. Got a little clumpy here, so I'm going to use this to kind of break that up, just kind of prove the concept. Mm, making a face. Oops, no, that's wrong. And it doesn't get so hot that it, it'll burn your fingers or anything. You just got to be careful with your eye area, which is actually where it's going. So there we go. But yeah, it just perks it right up, which is so nice. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now. So yeah, I think that's about it. I used 20 bajillion makeup brushes per usual, <laughs> but I used, um, just a brief recap. I used the tempura color on my lid. I used dusty rose predominantly here, but also a little bit out here, kind of like almost in a straight line. I used rose pink right here on the lid, lid outer corner. I used, um, fairy with my finger right here. It's kind of like a gold color. But when this is the base and you put that on top of it, it's not it's not too too intense as long as you are very gentle and don't don't over apply sparing amounts of of uh, makeup there. I used rustic up here 
And you can see that even though that doesn't look like it's super dark here in the pan, it, it is dark up against my super, super pale skin, <laughs> which is an, another reason why um, these nude eyeshadow trials are so entertaining to me um, to do because it really is kind of a challenge certain color palettes to see is this actually a nude eyeshadow palette so all right before you get into that uh elaine says had her whole face tattooed i don't remember the eyes being puffy but my lips were lol that sounds about right but i, I bet i bet it looked really cool once it was done healing and that your life is now a lot easier when it comes to your makeup because of it because uh some days if i'm running late i don't even bother i'm just like whatever i've got a zit here I'll just throw a hat on. I'm just going to the grocery store or whatever. And okay. Catherine's still getting a 404 broken link with a sad fox. I mean, did did, did you copy the whole uh, link I, I put in the comment there for you, Catherine? Um, I can't think of anything else unless, you know, it doesn't work in Canada. Oh, I'm not I, sure. It should work. We have patrons all over the world. I literally just went there and I'm staring at it right now. So it is live. It, it is, is live. live. It is working. It is live. It is working. And here, just just to be on the safe side again, I'll, I'll I'll put this here. Boop. I know you probably did already. People are gonna be like, she's shamelessly plugging her Patreon a lot, but we're just trying to make sure that people who want to get there can actually access it. Yeah, it should it should be internationally accessible for sure, because um, we have um, patrons from all over the world who who hang out with us, and and in fact, a lot of folks who. Um, don't necessarily want to deal with the shipping costs of buying from us directly support us on patreon um as kind of like another way of helping us keeping this going boy that was terrible grammar on my part <laughs> yes shameless self-plug achieve that's that's a twofer in this one. Oh yeah um oh helen said it doesn't last so so is that uh, I've heard that about microblading too, that microblading, you have to keep getting it done over and over again. And that's kind of what keeps me from doing it, even though it looks really cool. It does too. It looks like it would make life so much more simple. Just be like, I'm all made up. I was, I woke up like this. Really? <laughs> oh man. Um, but uh, let's see, this is how it ended up looking. Let's ask ourselves the magic questions. Nigel, you want to be in charge of the magic questions? Uh, are we talking about, hang on a minute, i got to find these here. Da, 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 da. Number one, is it nude? Obviously, this doesn't quite look like a no makeup makeup look because I am wearing a really pretty kind of pink lipstick, which, by the way, is still holding up like a champ. Good for you, Charlotte Tilbury. This, again, is Lost Cherry by Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I just got this in the mail literally today and had to put it on because I love the, these kinds of cool pink colors and it's it's still still holding on there pretty good you know i've been drinking out of a cup my drink is now gone the cup doesn't have a ton of lipstick on it just just barest hints so i i approve this is a good right that should be easier for me to clean yeah um and uh i think that this still looks relatively nudish. I think that it was kind of a challenge to get it there though, if I'm being honest. Um, so I'm going to say yes, asterisk. I had to use very strategic application. I had to use very, um, I mean, if you look at the brushes I did use, um, with the exception of the one I used for my liner, they're all very diffuse fluffy brushes to try to avoid over application of product. And you will waste a ton of product with this palette because it crumbles here, just, just, I've got a table in front of me, but I don't know if you can see some of this falling off onto the table, but there's just a ton of dust kicked up from this palette. Here, let me wipe this off so you can kind of, that all was just on the table. Bloody hellfire. So, yes, it is nude. Would I necessarily recommend this palette as one of my favorite nude palettes? No. <laughs> not even kind of but it is fun to play with it is versatile it's messy look at the outside of this thing i look like a complete slob because of how this turned out um and uh yeah it's but you can do pretty things with it um and i think that uh you know i don't hate it <laughs> but it's not what i would choose um for my number one like go-to nude palette um maybe if i had a medium skin tone 
because uh, that's my my main criticism of this is that it only gives you the one really light color and the rest are all mid-tone or darker with the exception of the two kind of vibrant highlight shades that are gold based. So this is some something that would probably look even more convincing and nude and be easier to apply if I had a really nice deep tan, but I don't tan. And that brings me to another point that I want to mention. People ask me all the time, how can I tell if I have cool tone skin or if I have warm tone skin? And everyone always says, you know, do you prefer silver or gold to tone jewelry? Or, you know, is your vein here on your hand green or blue? That can be tricky. That can be really tricky. So the way I like to present it is this. Um, do you tan? Do you tan? If you tan um, and you are a Caucasian person, chances are you have a gold undertone to your skin. If you burn or freckle, even if it eventually turns into a tan at some point, but if you're, you're, you initially burn or freckle, chances are you have very cool skin. Um, and you could have both. You could be the kind of person who will burn first, has freckles, but it turns into a tan. And chances are, you know, if, if that is you, you are probably in that neutral category where you're a little bit of both. And I am in that category, you know, where I, I have a little bit of ivory, which is, which is kind of like a gold skin tone for, for really light skin people. I have a little bit of an ivory uh, skin tone, but I also have a lot of, of pink reddish in my skin. And so that's why tests like, does this look green or blue? are not always adequate because yeah my vein is blue but but i could actually do a lot with ivory eye makeup or not eye makeup ivory base makeup as well um without it being too jarring here you know as long as it's still like within the same you know it's not too light or too dark it's just a matter of the undertone um but not everyone can manipulate it so easily you know and that's why knowing that about your skin tone helps a lot. And, and the color wheels are helpful too. I've mentioned those before, but those can be, where did I put my color wheel? These, Should be in the basket back there. These can be hard to read though, because none of these are going to be exactly like your skin tone. And your skin might be different down here than it is up here, you know? So I just like to think of it as if you're having difficulty pinpointing what your undertone is, um, you know, think about whether or not you tan, and and if that doesn't do the trick, then chances are, you know, if it's not an easy thing for you to pin down as a binary, chances are that you might have to investigate. Do you have olive undertones to your skin? Because that's an outlier in a lot of these these scenarios. And olive is a difficult skin undertone to match a lot of makeup with. So if you struggle with warm or cool tones chances are you might need to look for makeup that will work well with ivory or an ivory olive undertones because that's tricky. Um, I, and uh, Helen's got a question. Were you always interested in makeup? Yes. Um, when I was younger, um, and I, I think it's my grandma's fault, honestly, and I'll try to keep this short. My grandma, um, my dad's mom, was one of those women who would never, ever, ever leave the house without powder, rouge, and lipstick. Every single day of her life, the minute she woke up, she would go to the bathroom. She'd come out after brushing her teeth with a full face of makeup on. <laughs> and, you know, as she got older, obviously, um, you could tell that she she wasn't adapting to, you know, the changes in her skin and her makeup routine because, you know, it would just be overwhelming. She had way too much rouge on, way too much lipstick. But man, she walked around like she owned the place because you could tell she felt like a million bucks after she would put her face on and that just left a real impression on me. She always made sure she had perfume on. She always made sure that she had some kind of jewelry on. And she, you know, it was like her armor, you know? And I remember that very distinctly. Now, I don't, I don't feel like that personally. Like, I can go outside without makeup and without doing my hair. And I can go out with my hair like this and make fun of it and not really get too, too bent out of shape about it. It's the conversation piece now. <laughs> You know, um, oh, th thank you, uh, Catherine. But yeah, I love, I love my grandma, and um, she, she would, she made a huge impression on me, and we would play dress up together and stuff like that. And yeah, so even though my mom's kind of a tomboy, my my grandma 
was always very, very fun. And she she was a very fascinating, interesting person. And uh, she's kind of like my hero growing up. So yeah, she definitely left an impression on me. And, and this is something where when I was in high school, for example, I'm a terrible actress, awful, like verifiably awful. I auditioned every single year to be in my high school musical. And even though I was in multiple choirs and I always got solos and I was I was known to be a decent singer, they would not cast me in any of the musicals because I could dance to save my life and I'm a terrible actress, just really bad. Like I have no stage presence at all. And so uh, I always ended up on the makeup crew. Always. <laughs> Jody says my grandmother once refused to get in the ambulance after a car accident because she didn't have her eyebrows on. That sounds just like my grandma. That sounds just like my grandma. Like she would be mortified if people saw her without her makeup on. Like it was just the worst. Your grandma sounds like my mom's mom. She used to get her hair done once a week. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you got the same impression from that that uh, I did from my grandma, but it was like, it seemed like that was her her armor because when she would take it off at night, it was like her personality almost changed, you know, and not in a bad way. It was like, you could tell that she felt more vulnerable without it. And then when she would put it on, it was like, that was who she, she wanted the world to see. It, it was almost like, you know, uh, when David Bowie becomes Ziggy Stardust, it's like transcendent, you know, makeup is magical like that. So it's hair. Hair is almost more so, which, which brings me to grabbing some of these wigs. Um, go ahead. Catherine Ellis says it's good to have a hero in your life, Heather. Absolutely. And Liz, whoops, moved. Liz says my grandmother was my role model too. I I love this the, these kinds of stories. I love that we are sharing these things we have in common. That's just so fun, you know. The internet can be magical like that sometimes. I'm gonna go ahead and plop on this moonlit orchid while we're talking because this is the one I was actually looking forward to showing you the most with this whole outfit and this lipstick and everything. I just think it's gonna look really pretty. I gotta sit back a little bit so I can see the mirror over the camera. She has a slight little bit of taco head going on because I haven't styled this, but I didn't want to style it. I wanted you to see what it looked like in the raw. I mean, she's pretty, right? The issue is really when I when I tilt my head down, you can kind of see some of the tracks that that's the issue because she's so compressed in packaging and then when i turn around you might be able to see some of those too so you would have to style her a little bit and fluff her up hence why we're discounting her but the style is really super cute and i love the way that this color looks with all this other stuff i think it looks really really fun and all also i think that the little hint of warm tone that i put in the highlight here is acting like the rug in the Big Lebowski. It's like tying the whole look together. It's giving it a nice subtle contrast to really make my eyes stand out from the rest of the cool tone stuff going on. What do you guys think? What do you think, Nigel? I think that whole I think that whole thing works together very well. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. Ha, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and he says looks great with the eye look. Thank you. I I'm I'm very much uh enjoying the way that this would look. I would go out looking like this for sure. I think this looks really fun. I think people would tell me I have a really cool haircut if I went out like this, you know, mainly because I think people really dig uh, pastel purple hair. Who could blame them? Purple is amazing. But um, very <laughs> nice look, Heather, says Bettina. Thank you, Bettina. Beth says, how would it work with a hat? It would work great. Um, actually, I might have a hat up here. Let me see. Yeah. We've also got people saying, um, oh, I need to see your shirt, Heather. No, it's it's Dolly. It says, uh, tease it to Jesus and spray like hell. And she's holding like an aquanet, like she's holding like a sacred candle or something. <laughs> I love it. Uh, plus, Dolly is just gorgeous. So I feel extra gorgeous with these dimples on my chest. Uh, if I don't, if I can't have boobs like that, at least I can, I can have her and I can live vicariously through her magical boobs, I guess. Like I, I have an A cup. I've had an A cup for a really long time. So I definitely have a dolly boob envy, but, uh, we can't have everything all the time. It's okay. At least I don't have pain. Right. Um, very, very, um, 
supportive comments all around for this look. So here's a little beanie that I just threw on. But yeah, she, she's, it's easy to wear a hat with this one. Um, because she doesn't have a ton of permatease on top. That's kind of the problem. I think she probably either needed more permatease or a little bit more hair. So a hat will go over it pretty darn easily because she just doesn't have a ton of poof on top. Uh, the Mertz has a good question. Love this style. Are you fixing it and relisting? Uh, we're actually reworking the entire style to do something a little bit different. Um, and... Um, uh, we're, we've actually kind of abandoned the idea of doing something quite like this, and instead we made our Mirabella. So the Mirabella from the Wigs Forever line can kind of be viewed as my revamp of this. So anybody who has uh, basically been on Patreon, because um, this is something I was very open with the Patreon crowd about, because Liz in particular, if I'm recalling correctly, was very excited about this one coming in, and then I was like, sorry guys, womp womp, it's not really ready for prime time. What I did with that information, because this is this has been something I've been sitting on, like we've had these in our warehouse ready to ship for months at this point. Um, I I knew that we had issues with with this wig, and we created Mirabella to be an upgraded version of something like this or our Ambrose. So very similar style. It's just made with a non-heat friendly synthetic fiber. So it moves a little bit more naturally because this fiber looks great because it's not super shiny, but heat friendly just doesn't move the same way. So Mirabella moves beautifully. It's just a little shinier and her top looks a lot better because what we did was we re replaced this with a, with a uh, kind of like a, a fabric skin part and it looks really good. And it's a lot lighter weight and a lot less scratchy than other kinds of cap constructions. And I actually like it better than monofilament because you can't see the knots. So it kind of gives you the illusion of like a French knotted top without the expense. So it, it looks really cool. Uh, if you haven't seen my video um, on this channel where I talk about Mirabella, check it out. Um, it might actually be on the Sister Weeks 2 channel, come to think of it. But I show the, the top of the cap in detail, and it looks really, really good. So that would be the upgraded version of this without this fatal flaw going on. Kathleen says, every time I wear Heather's wig, people compliment me on my quote-unquote hair. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. That That is best case scenario. All right, I'm going to grab this one now, which is the wild card. It's another cool tone. I think this is another one that's going to be kind of a cakewalk for this particular eye look because it's predominantly cool tone. I love the way that the texture of this hair looks with this color. It just, it, it looks so pretty <laughs> in this longer style with this pretty blue transition and I still think that the eye makeup works with it now you might see some of the wefts exposed when I turn around I don't know but I'll kind of hover here for a second so you can kind of see that for yourself in action and it might just be a matter of I'm being too picky but I I want to make sure that if I'm charging full price for anything, that it's definitely good value for money. A value isn't a value if it's not priced relative to what you're going to be getting. But I think at 25 bucks, this is an absolute steal. <laughs> I think that that is a very fair price for this. Um, and that that's really me basically selling it at cost, if I'm being honest. Um, and it's just to recoup some of that money get this wig into a loving home, a forever home. And then that way I can use that money to then make more styles like the Mirabella, which is kind of like the upgrade of this. I think this looks really good. And I love, I love the texture of this. And just in case you're curious, cause I'm kind of marketing this on the site as a hat wig at the moment, I'll put the hat back on so you can kind of see. Um, this is just a, a little beanie. Yeah. But I'm sure you could probably get like um like a ball cap or something like that on here too. Though if you were gonna put this with a ball cap, I would highly recommend just turning it into a halo, um, which is super simple to do. Um, you literally just cut the top off, add a little bit of Velcro, 
Um, maybe I should make a video about how to make a, a halo. I don't know if I've done that already or not. Cause I know that I've made halos before. I just don't know if I've made a video about it. It's super easy to do though. And it's a well, great- tell, tell, tell you what my sweet, I will look on the the channel and see if there are any halo videos. Yeah. And if so, I'll post the link in the comments. Okay. Yeah. I remember if I've made a Halo video before, but I know that I've actually done it and it's it's easy to do. And it's a great way to get use out of a lot of different kinds of wigs, including like really cheap wigs on Amazon and stuff like that. If you see one that's in a color that you think is really cool, but the top is just a, a, a non-starter, you can easily convert one of those into a Halo and make it work for you if you know how to how to do that. And honestly, the cheaper the wig, the less painful it is to do something like that. <laughs> But yeah, I, I think this works great. So I'm going to go to the one that I think is actually going to be the trickiest one to pull off with all this cool tone stuff. And that's the peach bellini. So let me go grab that. Gonna shake her a little bit, make her fluffier. Yeah, yes. you've, rev you've reviewed some halos, but you haven't done a video on how to make one. Maybe I should add that to the list of things to do someday because it, it is. It's super easy to make a halo out of a wig. Deirdre asked what the flaw was. It's a little bit too thin on top. And so in some of the lighter colors, you can see the tracks near the top of the wig. Um, particularly when you first pull it out of the box or in the box of the bag because it ships flat pack. And, uh, but if you fluff it up, if you play with it a little bit, if you particularly fluff up the permatease on top, it's not such a big deal. But because of the fact that, you know, to me, first impressions matter. And while I don't mind it when people get a little bit of taco head, you know, from the wig being packed flat, which is basically, you know, because it's being shipped like this, it gets kind of a crease on the top. So you put it on a mannequin head overnight, just kind of massage it on top with your hand. And usually it will do the trick. I also made a video if you would want to use heat tools to accelerate the process. Um, and that video is, uh, I believe, on the the main channel. It could be on Sister Wicks 2, too. I think that might also be on Sister Wicks 2, because that might have been when my channel was um, uh, in limbo. <laughs> so... Um, but that, that's really easy to fix. Uh, unfortunately though, the kind of styling that, that, um, you know, the, the lack of permities, lack of hair would require, it requires you to actually like, you know, use like a curling iron on top. This is a heat friendly fiber to kind of fluff it up a little bit. Speaking about the blue hair, my beautiful grandma had the blue rinse hair color in the 1960s when she went gray. Look lovely. Before her time, says Wendy. That sounds really cool. <laughs> Literally, uh, sounds very uh, nifty and also sounds very interesting and cool toned and fashionable. Yeah, I think this still works. I think that the, the gold tones that I use in the interior part of my eye are really, again, what's kind of holding it all together and keeping it from looking uh, a little bit clashy. Um, I actually don't think that this uh, lipstick is clashing too bad either. I think that no, it works. Yeah, it looks real cute. So gold stars again for Miss Charlotte Tilbury. So here's what the back of this looks like. I don't know if you can actually see the wefts through here. But uh, again, it might just be me being too cautious, but I'd rather play it safe than sorry. I, I want people to be wowed by my stuff and not, you know, underwhelmed. <laughs> this, is, this is super pretty, though. And again, I think for 25 bucks... It's an absolute bargain um, because the, the issue with the top of the wig is easy to fix. And if you plan to wear her as a hat wig or just to, you know, braid her and practice with her or to practice cutting, you know, if you want to practice trimming a bang, this would probably be a great wig to, to do that with. Um, and if you're not in our Moon Kitty mix-up group, um, I highly encourage you to check that out on Facebook. Um, Kathleen, Ryan... Um, she makes excellent uh, little um, uh, infographic posts to show people how to really get the most out of styling their wigs that they buy from us, particularly the more inexpensive products that we've been releasing on our own, because it's a little safer to play around with wigs that don't cost you four or five hundred bucks than it is to play with wigs that are really fancy and scary to modify. <laughs> Well, Jody says, I'm a retired hairstylist. I can't wait to play with this and see what I can do. 
you would be you would have so much fun with these in particular because you have that skill set because this would be a breeze for you to work with probably jody because it's really i'm looking out for people who are new to this you know when, whenever i'm trying to make these determinations i'm like you know if if i were 17 year old heather who had a shoestring budget and had to save up for months just to buy a wig you know would 17 year old heather who had no skills styling or wearing a wig be super let down buying that product right and i don't think 17 year old heather would be bummed out at all buying this wig for 25 bucks and then playing around with it i do think that if she had to pay 100 for it and she was able to see tracks in the back when she first pulled it out of the bag yeah that's where that might might end up being kind of like a womp womp and that's what i'm trying to avoid so i always try to like channel myself back when i first started to notice my own hair loss how vulnerable i felt how I had no money to play with and how nobody I knew was actually losing their hair. So I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. And I try to remember what that sensation was like and try to view the products through that lens instead of the lens of somebody who's seen thousands of these wigs and is kind of like, eh, yeah, they're all fun. And I know how to make them work, you know, because 40 year old Heather knows how to make the most out of just about any wig and I can DIY them and Franken wig them and cut them up and splice them together and, and make them look really cute. But you know, newbies, it's really intimidating for them and they may not, they may not have that skill or even have the inclination to want to acqu acquire it. So I want to make sure that I'm kind of looking out for their interests above anything else really. Right. Okay. A couple questions. Deidre says, can you dye these wigs? Uh, absolutely. You can dye any wig, but just know that if you use like, say, um, an alcohol based dye, which is a technique that is currently making the rounds on online, it works. It will also make your hair feel like straw. It will change the way the hair feels, the way it functions and the way that it moves. So, you know, yes, with the caveat that it will look really cool, but it will probably feel like crap when you're done. Um, and the same holds true if you use like nylon friendly dye, like synthetic uh, material friendly dye um, from RIT or something like that, that you get at like Hobby Lobby or something like that. It, you know, those kinds of dyes will be effective and you'll be able to make these different colors, but it will affect the way that the hair feels in a negative fashion. It will, it will make it go from being kind of soft to feeling very scratchy. And you have to ask yourself before you engage in that, you know, is the look worth that? Um, you know, sometimes it might be, if it's really cool, if the end result looks really good, it might be worth it to, to take that dive and, and, and play with it. And just to say that you did it and just so you have something really unique. But if you are very sensitive to tactile things and, you know, you're the kind of person who can't handle wearing a wool sweater, you know, that sort of thing, it's, it's going to be like having a wool sweater on your head. And Another thing I might I might point out, I've tried using RIT dye before, and sometimes it just does not take well to well, some... RIT, RIT dye, regular RIT dye is made to, for cotton. You know, it's made for like tie dye and stuff like that. Like it's not yeah. meant for, for synthetic fiber, but they do make synthetic dye that you can use. Yeah, well, I, 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 I did use some of that. And, so, mm. and, and again, it depends on the density and, and, and the material because I've, I've put some uh things through writ dye and it lasts a good long time and on others it doesn't take at all and on other materials it takes very well at at first and then it fades within a week so you know yeah. it's definitely an experimentation kind of thing yeah and the dyes that they're using on wigs whether they're human hair or synthetic are very specific and they're not the kinds of dyes that you can get from like a craft store um, they're like industrial dyes that are typically used on like, um, you know, upholstery and stuff like that. They're like very, very hardcore dyes and they do rinse the hair and stuff like that when they're done dyeing it, obviously, because I mean, if they didn't, every time you would wear it, when you first got it, it would, it would deposit color on you. So the whole process is very involved, but when they dye the wigs, um, you know, the, 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 it's like a textile dye that they're using it's a very heavy duty industrial dye and it's meant to not fade and so if if you're trying to use regular dye that you can get from like the drugstore or like a hobby store 
um, it's not meant to do that. And it will, it will fade with sun exposure, with washing and with styling. And in the case of heat friendly synthetics, another hazard you have to be mindful of is if you heat style it and you pull on it too aggressively. And this is true, even if you don't try to dye it on your own, even if you're, you know, you just buy this and you love it and you like the color the way it is. If you pull on it, like when you're flat ironing it, this is, this is a hazard of heat styling any heat friendly wig. You can't pull on the hair when you're applying the heat. You know, you just want to be very gentle and run that flat iron through it. Maybe hold it here so you can um, really be careful about how much tension you're putting on the hair because it's very easy to stretch out and distort the fiber. And when you do that, it actually, like it, it doesn't technically fade the color, but it will look really faded because the, the dye is kind of like extruded into the fiber. And if you pull on it, and the same holds true for like a Raquel Welch, True to Life fiber, John Renault's uh, HD fiber, it's all the same in this regard. If you pull on it, it stretches the actual physical material and it, you know, the dye doesn't necessarily, um, look the same because it's being displaced you know what i mean like it's being stretched right along with the the actual fiber itself so the end result is not only will the wig look distorted but the the color will look faded over time because you're stretching it out and it's displacing where that that dye is located on the hair shaft and it just it lets more light get through it which makes the color look more diffuse. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope that that <laughs> actually sounded like a coherent explanation of what happens. Anybody who's tried to uh, heat style um, a heat friendly wig and has pulled on it a little bit too aggressively can probably attest to it made the color look funky afterwards. And that's basically what I'm trying to explain. Okay. Uh, a couple more things. Catherine says, can you put the Facebook link in this to add later? I can't get into the Facebook right now for Lila. Yeah, I, I can do that. I'll, I'll post that in the comments in just a second there, Catherine. And then Sharon says, are the bangs long enough to be swept to the side? Yes. Just kind of keep in mind that it's a little bit darker towards the front hairline. So, you know, as long as you're doing it like that, if you, if you want to sweep it all down or you get too harsh with the part, you'll see the dark hair at the rooting and that'll look a little bit, um, a little intense. So I like to do kind of like an extreme side part with this. So that way it doesn't expose all that dark under hair like that. But yeah. Okay. And I've, I've posted the link for you there. You need to go in and uh, you, you uh, uh, ask to join and the moderators will sort you out at some point. Yeah. Um, and then Believer Girl says, thank you for teaching. You're and great. Shelly says, you always explain things very well. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm glad I can help you out. I, I think that we have gone above and beyond the call of duty on today's live stream. We talked about wig stuff. We talked about styling stuff. We talked about makeup stuff. We talked about grandma stuff. Dollar but stuff. there's something we haven't talked about. That. Is it neutral? I think it is. I think it went with every single one of these hair colors. So I think that it passes. So this eyeshadow palette, the ABH Soft Glam, passed both of my tests the only thing is is that you know as i mentioned it, it you end up blowing a lot of product and it's a little bit tricky to use blends really well probably best suited for medium to dark skin tones probably more so than somebody that's as light as i am but i was able to make it work and i think it's pretty so good job i think Excellent. that's about it for tonight honey uh was there anything else that you would like to add uh well if you're not signed up for our newsletter, simply go to sisterwigs.com and submit the form at the bottom of the page. That's right. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah. yeah, be sure to vote in our community tab polls each week. Tune in for our more casual laid-back stream tomorrow at 6 p.m. on Sister Wigs After Dark, the Sister we'll Wigs 2 channel. We're talking about vacations, so hopefully you will come armed with vacation stories to share. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, other than that, thank you for joining us. It's Thank been a you, hoot. everyone. Have a great night. Thank you for co-hosting, Nigel. You were charming and wonderful as ever. And thank you. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow, hopefully. All right. Take it easy. Thanks, folks. And see you then.